Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of 1 over the square root of e to the x plus 1 dx. So pause the video, try it on your own. I'll just say this one came from Calculus 2 textbook that we used to teach out of years ago. So it should be accessible to anybody who's in or taking Calc 2. All right, so what I did first was I made a u substitution and I decided to let u be the entire denominator. So I let u be the square root of e to the x plus one. And then before I go ahead and differentiate so I could find du, what I like to do is square both sides. It makes the whole process a lot easier. So u squared equals e to the x plus one. And then now let me differentiate both sides. So on the left-hand side, we'll have two u du and then that equals e to the x dx. All right, so I know this whole denominator right here, that's just gonna be u. And then dx, I need to write that entirely in terms of u. So let's get it by itself right here. So we know that dx equals 2u du over e to the x. But we're not mixing variables. I gotta replace this e to the x to be entirely in terms of u. So just come back right here where you made the u sub. And actually, you know what? Come right here after we squared, it's even better. Because then we can say, all right, e to the x is equal to u squared minus one. Perfect, so then now I can say dx is two u du over u squared minus one. So the entire differential dx gets replaced with this expression here, 2u du over u squared minus 1. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's rewrite our entire integral in terms of u. So we'll have 1 over u. That's this part here, 1 over u. And then instead of dx, I'm going to replace it now with 2u du over u squared minus 1. All right, beautiful. Now, ooh, do you notice? Yes, this U cancels out. Beautiful. And then we're left with 2 du over U squared minus 1. Now, some of my students have memorized what the antiderivative would be at this step. In case you haven't, all you would need to do is factor and find the partial fraction decomposition of the integrand. Uh, you could also do a substitution, but I don't think it's necessary, like a trig one. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the partial fraction decomp. And I'm going to leave the 2 in the numerator. It'll make it nice. So we have u plus 1, u minus 1, since the denominator is a difference of squares. Each of those is a linear factor, so the decomposition will have the form a over u plus 1, plus b over u minus 1. Okay, multiply everything through by the LCD, which is u plus 1, u minus 1. And then we're left with 2 equals a times u minus 1, plus b times u plus 1. Now to solve for a and b, you don't have to multiply everything out in this case. You could just let u equal 1. And then we have 2 equals a times 0. That's why I chose u to be 1, so that that whole term would be 0. Plus b times 2. So b is equal to 1. And then to find a, we would just need to let u be negative 1, so that that term will go away. So then if u is negative 1, we have 2 equals a times negative 2 plus b times 0. So a is negative 1. Okay. So now we can rewrite our integral. Since a is negative, you guys, I'm going to actually put it second so it looks nicer. So the integral now becomes 1 over u minus 1 minus 1 over u plus 1 du. Okay, perfect. From here, you should be able to anti-differentiate. No big deal. Natural log absolute value u minus 1 minus natural log absolute value u plus 1 and then now's the time to put plus c and then go back replace u with what it originally was which was square root of e to the x plus 1 minus 1 minus ln absolute value square root e to the x plus 1 plus 1 plus c 
Okay, now something to keep in mind. We know e to the x is never negative. So if I have e to the x plus 1, this is always going to be a bigger than 1, right? And then if I take the square root, it's still going to be bigger than 1. Minus 1, so I know everything here, the argument of this natural log, is not going to be negative. So I don't need to keep the absolute value bars. And then this one for sure, for sure won't be negative because we have addition between the two terms. So we can drop the absolute value bars. And then we can also use our properties of logarithms to combine them. So we'll just have natural log. Hold on, that was very ugly looking natural log. I've got to redo that. Okay, natural log of square root e to the x plus 1 minus 1 over, and you don't need absolute value anymore, square root e to the x plus 1 plus 1 plus c. Okay, and then I played around with it a little bit, and I tried, uh, I was like, oh, if I rationalize the denominator, then the numerator is going to be squared, and I can move the 2 and clean up, but it didn't look a whole lot better, and this is how the back of the book left the answer, so we can just stop here. But you let me know how you solved it. Did you do it differently? You could have chosen you to be something else and it would still work out nicely. So let me know in the comments down below how you liked this integral. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you need to review any of your integration techniques, then check out the video lectures I have, specifically the Calc 2 video lectures playlist and the integral of the day playlist. And if you need help with any of your other math classes, I probably have content for you. I have everything ranging from like trig, pre-calc, Calc 1, 2, 3, differential equations, linear algebra, stats. I have so many videos, over a thousand. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Bye, guys!